Good morning. We have general questions. Question number one, Gen Alec Ferguson. Um, thank you, Presiding Officer. Um, to ask the Scottish Government what its position is on the retention of locally accessible inpatient facilities for mental health patients. Cabinet Secretary Shona Robinson. The Scottish Government provides funding to individual health boards who are in turn responsible for providing services which meet the physical and mental health needs of their local population. Some inpatient mental health care will always be necessary, but the focus in recent times has been on maximising the provision of appropriate services in the community. Mental health is an absolute priority for the Scottish Government and we will continue to work closely with our partners, including the NHS, local authorities, the third sector, service users and carers, to ensure that we offer the best quality of life and opportunities for people with mental health problems. Alex Ferguson. Uh, well, I thank the Cabinet Secretary for her response and for meeting with me recently to discuss the situation regarding the Darite facility uh, in Stranra, which the local health board wishes to close. If it is closed, patients in need of inpatient support will have to be transferred to Dumfries, a round journey of over 150 miles for the patients, families and loved ones. There is widespread public anger about this, and there is cross-party support for the retention of an inpatient facility in Stranra, feelings that were most recently expressed at a well-attended public rally just last Saturday. Things are getting somewhat heated. Local Council of all parties are keen to meet question, with the Cabinet Secretary. It's just coming, Presiding Officer. Thank you. Local councillors of all parties are keen to meet with the Cabinet Secretary to discuss the situation. And my simple question is to ask whether she is willing to undertake such a meeting. Cabinet Secretary. Well, look, as the member knows, the board is now committed to engaging with local stakeholders for six months on the proposed service model that seeks to uh, maximise the provision of local community-based care. Uh, I've been reassured by the Chief Executive that uh, he remains personally committed to meeting with any elected representatives who wish to discuss this. Um, it is a matter for the Board. I'm happy to continue to meet with uh, Alex Ferguson. I've also met with uh, Aileen McLeod uh, and uh, any other members within this place who want to meet with me to discuss Darity. But in terms of taking forward the consultation on uh, the proposed service uh, change, that is best left to the Board to get on with the job of doing that while consulting local elected members. Question number two, Mark Griffin. Thank you, President Officer. To ask the Scottish Government when the Cabinet Secretary for Health, we, Wellbeing and Sport last met NHS Lanarkshire and what was discussed. Cabinet Secretary Shona Robertson. Ministers and government officials regularly meet with representatives of all health boards, including NHS Lanarkshire, to discuss matters of importance to local people. Mark Griffin. Yeah, thank the Cabinet Secretary for that answer. How are NHS Lanarkshire and the Scottish Government responding to the outbreak of H1N1, otherwise known as swine flu, in the Cumberland and Kilsyth area? Can the Cabinet Secretary set out if there is anything the Government can do to increase the uptake of the flu vaccine in the vulnerable groups who would be most at risk from the virus? Cabinet Secretary. Well, can I reassure the member, of course, we've been kept fully informed uh, of the issue and to know that there is a um, really very, very low risk uh, to the public and it is being well managed by the local health professionals, as you would expect. I'm happy to write to the member with more details of that if they find that helpful. In terms of the uptake of the flu vaccine, um, it is very important that uh, people who uh, are entitled to the, the vaccine and who would benefit, particularly those who have uh, health conditions that makes them more vulnerable, should take the, up the flu vaccine. Of course, there's been a lot of promotion of the flu vaccine uh, up with the uptake campaign. Um, I am aware uh, that you know, there is a, um, it appears to be that the vaccine is a, a better fit this year with the, the flu um, that is out there in the community. So again, that's an important message. But if Mark Griffin would find it helpful for me to write him with a more detailed uh, response, particularly on the H1N1 issue, then I'll do that and make sure he's fully appraised of the work that's been taken forward locally on that issue. Question number three, Colin Beattie. To ask the Scottish Government when work will start in the schools that are receiving funding from the recently announced £230 million investment under the Scotland Schools for Future programme. Cabinet Secretary Angela Constance. Signing officer, the Government wishes to maintain momentum uh, across Scotland for the future programme and build on the excellent progress 
uh, that has been achieved to date. Uh, councils have already been informed that we expect all 19 of the schools that we announced on the 25th of January to be delivered and open for business by 31st of March uh, 2020. Uh, at the, the very latest. Moreover, uh, earlier delivery dates are both expected and encouraged. As part of the project development work, councils will be working with the Scottish Futures Trust uh, to draw up detailed programmes which capture key milestones and ensure that the projects uh, will be delivered uh, by the required timeline. Colin Beatty. Can the Cabinet Secretary confirm what steps will be taken to ensure disruption to pupils' education such as of those at Wallyford Primary School, will be kept to a minimum. Cabinet Secretary. Poseidon Officer, it is of course for education authorities to develop and implement such transition plans and we would hope and expect that any disruption to children's education is of course kept to uh, an absolute minimum uh, when moving them from an existing school uh, to a new one. Um, in the case of uh, Wallyford uh, Primary School, um, East Lothian Council has uh, indicated to government officials that the, the re relocation of the school will indeed require a, a statutory consultation uh, to be undertaken uh, in terms of the Schools Consultation Scotland 2010 Act. And under this Act, uh, a Council's proposal paper must set out clearly, amongst other things, uh, how it intends to minimise or avoid any uh, adverse effects that may arise from uh, implementation of the proposal. And we understand that East Lothian Council uh, has still to carry out this very important consultation. John Scott. Thank you, Presiding Officer. The First Minister announced last week that funding is now available for rebuilding Queen Margaret Academy in my constituency. Can the Cabinet Secretary give me details of when this work will start and the expected completion date of this rebuild project? And hopefully this will be before 2020. Cabinet Secretary. Um, yes, President Officer, as I indicated in my answer uh, to uh, Mr Beattie, uh, as part of the, the project development work uh, that is rightly uh, undertaken between councils and the, the Scottish Futures Trust, uh, they will draw up um, very detailed programmes, uh, capturing all the, the key necessary steps, uh, mapping out uh, a timeline. Um, it is the, the intention uh, that these schools, uh, all 19, will be delivered and open for business uh, by uh, the 31st of March uh, 2020 at uh, the very latest. And of course, I can write to Mr Scott uh, with more specific information about the envisaged uh, milestones with regards to the school and his constituency. Question number four, Fiona MacLeod. Thank you. To ask the Scottish Government for what reason personal independence payments are included for income assessment as part of the common financial tool in a bankruptcy process. Cabinet Secretary John Swinney. So the, officer, the common financial tool determines the level of contribution a debtor, a debtor can pay, ensuring the interests of debtors and creditors are considered. It is absolutely clear, both in legislation and guidance, that no contribution is appropriate where income is derived solely from benefits. And where there is private income, any contribution must not include any element of state benefits that are, in, that are in payment. The Common Financial Tool Guidance also makes it clear that where personal independence payment or similar, similar benefit is received, full account must be taken of additional expenditure that is likely to be required for care, mobility or other health-related matters. Fiona MacLeod. I thank the Deputy First Minister for that answer, and I know that it will be of interest to a constituent of mine. May I ask how many bankruptcies have involved people in receipt of personal independence payments or similar benefits in the last year? Cabinet Secretary. Um, President Officer, I don't have the specific um, information um, uh, other than the fact that, uh, forgive me, since April 2015, 295 bankruptcies have been awarded following a debtor application where income has included personal independence payments, disability living allowance or attendance allowance and a contribution has been applied in one of these cases to the level of private income that has been involved. I hope that clarifies the issue for uh, Fiona MacLeod. Question number five, David Torrens. Officer, to ask the Scottish Government how it works with the NHS and local authorities to ensure that medical and home care for older people is adequate and sustainable. Cabinet Secretary Shona Robertson. Our legislation to integrate health and social care provides a platform for health boards and local authorities, along with third and independent sectors, to work together to ensure people are supported to live as independently as possible for as long as possible in their own homes. 
The Public Bodies Joint Working Scotland Act 2014 places a duty on integration authorities to create a single uh, strategic plan for the integrated functions and budgets that they control. The plan will set out how they will plan and deliver services for their area and the views of clinicians and care professionals, along with the independent and third sectors. Service users and carers will be central to shaping the commissioning and planning process. David Torrance. I thank the Cabinet Secretary for the answer. Can the Cabinet Secretary clarify the progress that has been made between NHS Fife and Fife Council in improving outcomes and supporting service redesign of health and social care integration, the establishment of a new joint board, and what share of the Scottish Government Integrated Care Fund for 2015-2016 is allocated to Fife? Cabinet Secretary. Uh, well, I can say to the, to the member that uh, yesterday I attended the formal launch of Fife's Health and Social Care Partnership. It was a very well attended event uh, with people from uh, all sectors there and uh, it was a, a, a very positive uh, event uh, through, through the day. Um, NHS Fife and Fife Council are, are making steady progress in relation to the integration of health and social care. I have signed off their integration scheme which details how integrated arrangements between both organisations will work and the integration joint board was able to be legally established from the 3rd of October 2015. The partnership recently conducted their consultation on their strategic plan and this ran from the 7th of October uh, last year to the 6th of January this year. This consultation is now closed and results will be considered by the integration joint board uh, on the 10th of February. Finally, the Fife <laughs> Integration Joint Board received £6.73 million from the Integration Care Fund in 2015-16 and, of course, will get their share of the £250 million announced in the, the, draft, uh, bud in the budget by uh, John Swinney uh, if Fife Council accept the uh, Scottish Government uh, deal. Question number six, Lewis MacDonald. Thank you very much. To ask the Scottish Government whether it expects to deliver the commitment that it made on the 30th of April 2014 that four specialist major trauma centres will be operational from 2016. Cabinet Secretary Shona Robertson. Uh, good progress continues to be made developing the, the right trauma network for Scotland. However, there are differing views among clinicians on just how many major trauma centres Scotland needs and it's extremely important that we get the model of care right. I've asked the National Planning Forums to examine what the appropriate balance of centres and responsibilities within a new trauma network would be. This new network will be developed to complement our A&E departments across the country and ensure the right specialists with the right experience are in place to save more lives in the most difficult of circumstances. Lewis MacDonald. It's very disappointing to hear that answer because the government made a very clear commitment in April 2014 that there would be four specialist major trauma centres. Does the Cabinet no Secretary not understand the impact on the morale of staff and on the ability of hospitals to recruit staff when she re reneges on that promise? I do not understand and perhaps she can explain why it is that Aberdeen Royal Infirmary and Nine Wells Hospital in Dundee are now faced with this uncertainty after a very clear commitment was made by her government two years ago. Cabinet Secretary. I don't know if Lewis MacDonald is suggesting that we just go ahead despite the fact that the clinicians do not agree at the moment about what the model of care should be. Surely it's important that we listen to the clinicians across the Order. whole of Scotland. Maybe uh, Lewis MacDonald doesn't want to hear the detail of the answer. I think it's important that he does and that we listen to the clinicians. As I said, good progress continues to be made with the work to develop the four major trauma centres, and that may well transpire to be the right model for Scotland. There is better data now than that that was available in 2013, and that's why I've asked the National Planning Forum to look again at the most appropriate model for Scotland, taking all of that into account. And until that work is completed, and until we get um, the clinicians to agree on what is the best model for Scotland, I'll not make a decision on the number of major trauma centres. I am happy to, take, uh, to keep Lewis MacDonald updated, but I am quite surprised that he wants to, in the face of a lack of clinical um, agreement on this, to push forward anyway. I think that speaks volumes about Lewis MacDonald's position on this matter. Question number seven, Mark MacDonald. 
Thank you, Presiding Officer. To ask the Scottish Government what plans it has to review the progress of the Scottish strategy for autism. Minister Jimmy Hepburn. The Scottish strategy for autism is a 10-year strategy, and while progress has been made, there is still work to be done. The Scottish Government reviews the progress of the strategy through quarterly meetings with the National Autism Governance Group. This group provides uh, service expertise, strategic leadership and challenges the delivery of the strategy's outcomes aimed at improving outcomes for individuals and families living with autism. The strategy progress is highlighted at the annual autism conference, which was most recently held in December 2015. The recommendations of the strategy have been reframed into an outcomes-based approach which identified the priorities from 2015 to 2017. These outcomes focus on improving services so that people with autism can live healthier lives, have choice and control of the services they receive, and are supported to be independent, active citizens. Mark Macdonald. I thank the Minister for his answer. Can I ask the Minister what the Scottish Government's response is to the Mental Welfare Commission report into the tragic death of Ms MN, uh, an individual on the autistic spectrum who took her own life in a care home, uh, and how the recommendations from that report will inform the work of the autism strategy in the future? Minister. It, well, uh, I uh, read with uh, great sadness the report from the Mental Welfare Commission for uh, Scotland on the death of uh, Ms MN. Uh, I uh, accept the recommendations for uh, the Scottish Government. The report and recommendations will be discussed with the Autism Strategy Governance Group at their next meeting on the 11th of uh, February as to how we uh, take these recommendations forward. Following this, a response from the Governance Group and the Scottish Government will be sent to the Mental Welfare Commission, uh, advising them of the actions to be taken forward. And, of course, any lessons for the overall strategy will also be taken forward as well, President Officer. Thank you. Question number eight, Neil Findlay. The Scottish Government whether it has confidence in the Chair and Chief Officers of NHS Lothian. Cabinet Secretary Shona Robertson. Yes. Neil Findlay. At NHS Lothian, we have a Chairman who arrogantly dismisses hundreds of emails from members of the public who are extremely concerned about the future of the children's ward at St John's Hospital, and a senior officer in the organisation who warns that a protracted review process would increase the risk of service disruption, but who then agrees to such a delay following pressure from civil servants and from you, Cabinet Secretary. So how can the public, how can the public, how can the public have confidence in any of you when you're playing party politics with the health and well-being of children across Lothian? Cabinet Secretary. Perhaps a bit of self-awareness wouldn't go amiss with Neil Finlay. The outcome of this uh, independent review and the timing of it was absolutely a matter for the board and for the Royal College of Paediatric and Children's Health. They have confirmed that they have had no discussion with the Scottish Government. It is an independent review commissioned by NHS Lothian, Order. and the timing of which was due to the availability of experts from the Royal College of Paediatrics and Child Health to carry out the review. Now, Neil Finlay asked about the, the 400 members of the public who have uh, con uh, contacted NHS Lothian. I absolutely do expect NHS Lothian, whether that is the Chair, the Chief Exec or anybody else within NHS Lothian, to listen to the concerns of those 400 individuals. I have made that clear. I have made that clear to the chair of NHS Lothian that he should do so. And I would hope that Neil Finlay would accept that assurance that any member of the public, whether they email or whether they write or whether they attend one of the local meetings, should be heard and that the review process, which I understand is going very well, will be a full process carried out by the Royal College. And I hope that Neil Finlay is not casting aspersions about the role of the Royal College here, because the Royal College of Paediatric and Children's Health are engaged in a full, a full consultation with local people. And I would hope that Neil Finlay would encourage local constituents to attend those meetings and take part fully. The only person talking about closing that ward at the moment appears to be Neil Finlay, no one else. Question number nine, Leslie Brennan. Ms Brennan. Scottish, uh, ask the Scottish Government what proportion of the £12 million funding for flood hit communities derives from Barnet consequentials and when will it be distributed? Cabinet Secretary John Swinney. Senior officer, any Barnet consequentials accrued to the Scottish Government are added to the total funding available to Scottish Ministers. It is then for Scottish Ministers to decide how available resources should be allocated. The First Minister announced the £12 million funding package on 9 January. Confirmation was received from Her Majesty's Treasury on 18 January. 
indicating that the Scottish Government will receive £14.5 million of resource in 2015-16. This was additional to the Barnet Consequentials received in December, which support the £4 million aid package announced in the Budget Statement. Local authorities are now actively paying out grants to those affected by the recent flooding. Uh, can I thank the Cabinet Minister for his response? Um, from whatever source the funding comes, it will certainly be a good, a good use given the devastating start of the year which a number of communities in my region have had to endure due to flooding and its aftermath and will, some, and will experience for some time yet. I would also like to acknowledge the flood recovery appeal which has reached £300,000 due to the generous support of the public businesses and funders, which is open to applications over and above any government funding. Can we get a question, Ms Brennan? Yep. Uh, will the Minister agree with me, however, that prevention is much better than cure? Given reports that plans for the long-awaited flood prevention scheme for Order. Stonehaven... Let's hear the member. So the long-awaited flood prevention scheme for Stonehaven are to be called in by the Scottish Government can he give me an undertaking that the process can avoid significant further delays whilst ensuring concerns of local residents and traders about the proposed development are taken fully into account? Cabinet Secretary. Well, uh, on, uh, on the point of, uh, of substance, President Officer, I agree with uh, Leslie Brennan uh, that it is important that we have a range of flood alleviation measures in place. Uh, some of that will involve flood defences, but as the flood management strategies make clear, uh, that also uh, involves alleviation measures in, um, the, uh, the, 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 in the hill areas uh, before water flows down to the coastal areas such as Stonehaven. Uh, I'm not familiar with the issues about the, uh, the flood scheme in Stonehaven, but Leslie Brennan will know that all applications of this nature have to go through effective public consultation and consideration, and some planning issues may not have been able to be resolved in that process. But I will explore the, the rationale and the reasoning for the situation in Stonehaven, and will write to her to confirm the details. Thank you. We now move to First Minister's questions. Question number one, Kez 